listen, Johnny. Come on, Smokey. No, no, Johnny. Get out. No. over at the Cosmo restaurant? Any objections? Jean's waiting over at the downtown. You tell her about Rita? Me? For what for, horse? Never mind my wife. Yeah. One I should wait? Four? Must sit around and watch or something? Sure. No, no. Not me. All right. She's nice, Rita. You sure can't pick names, Johnny. Why not? Town to pick from. <laughs> yeah. Find the defendant not guilty. Congratulations, Johnny. We did it again, huh? Order. Before court adjourns, the court has something to say to the jurors. Sit down, honey. Let's see what his honor has to say. Members of the jury, I will be as brief as possible. You and each of you swore to give a true verdict according to the evidence. You and each of you were the sole judges of the facts. Never in the many years that I have been on this bench have the facts been more clearly presented, nor was there ever less contradiction. And yet you found for the defendant. I cannot inquire into the reasons that swayed you. I can, however, say that in my opinion, and from the facts as they were marshaled before us all, you have neglected a sacred duty, a heritage given you and me and fought for by our forefathers, namely, to render justice without fear or favor. As you rendered your verdict, you at the same time stamped yourselves as either incapable or unworthy of being further entrusted with the protection of life, liberty, and happiness. At the conclusion of a case, the court often thanks the jurors for their services. In this case, however, I do not feel that it would be appropriate to express such thanks to you. For, frankly, I do not feel that you have done the duty for which you have been summoned. I therefore discharge you, not only from this case, but from all further jury duty. Court dismissed. That's it. You've got a sister, haven't you? Is she in the courtroom, Mrs. Moon? Well, I don't know. I... How about a statement, Mr. Moon? Well, uh, just say that I never lost faith in the courts of the city. Uh, justice be there. school subject. Pay is really more than, well, to be brief, I think it's worth looking into. Not that we're dissatisfied with your work here, on the contrary, but... Uh, but my sister happens to be married to Johnny Moon. Believe me, Miss Martin, I told them how stupid it was assuming that you would in any way, uh, well... Corrupt the children, is that what you mean? I tried to explain that you and your sister have nothing in common, but they would not listen. When I refused to let you go, they threatened to go over my head. 
Mr. McCarthy's wife can do that. I'm not going to make apologies for my sister, Mr. Delvers, and certainly not for myself. Under the circumstances, I'll resign immediately. What about the position? I'm sorry, but... I don't blame you for being angry. You have every right. But listen, anyway, before you make an objection. All right. What is it? You know the county house of correction? I do. Oh, it's not as bad as you think. Correction schools aren't exactly pleasant places. But those girls are not hardened criminals. They're young, most of them, 18 or 20. Girls who fell in with the wrong crowd. I'm not a reformer, Mr. Dalvis. You'll have nothing to do with the administration. As a matter of fact, though, the county hasn't appointed a superintendent to succeed the old one. Your job will be as a teacher. While the girls are there, the county provides them with an education. It's a help in finding better jobs afterwards. They need someone to handle the school. You have your master's degree in psychology. What about it? When I came in here, I knew I was going to be asked to resign. This isn't a new story with me. It's happened before. Well, I don't blame anyone, and least of all my sister. But as long as I stay in this town, I'll have the same problem. That's why I've made up my mind to leave. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Let me say again. It's not your fault. I can't persuade you. No. <laughs> Everything going stronger than ever. How's the take from the bookies? Over last month. Hello, Helen. Playing hooky? I want to see Jean. Sure, sure. Come on in. Thanks for your permission. What do you want to see Jean about? I'm leaving town. Oh, that's nice. And I'm taking her with me. Got a fat chance. What makes you think you've got such a hold on her? Maybe I'm sorry I have. Maybe I kind of wish she was out of town. Maybe she'll take her off your hands, boss. No, I don't have that much luck. Not all in one day. Well, welcome to the party. Well, looks like everybody's here. What are you doing here, Flatfoot? I hear you're a juvenile officer now. Yeah, that's right. For a girl by the name of Rita Randall. Cosmo restaurant down the street. Very pretty girl. Young. Too young to be stealing money from the till so she can doll up for some punk Romeo. Any idea where I can find her? You know a girl like that, Pinkhead? Me? No, oh, boss. No, I don't know any dumb dame like that. When I find her, I'll tell her you said that. Looks like you're losing all your dames at once, boss. Why do you suppose she did a dumb thing like that? Now go out and look for her. Try that rat trap where she lives. I'll beat it before Donovan pinches her. Hi, kid. Good to see you. I suppose you heard about the trial. Isn't it swell? No. Well, maybe you knocked on the wrong door or something. Listen, Jane. I'm leaving town tonight. Come on, go with me. Wait a minute. What's happened? They asked me to resign today. You know the reason. They think I'm corrupting the children. Why, those? You can't blame them. I suppose you blame me. It isn't a question of blaming anyone. As long as I stay in this town, it's going to be this problem. Come on, let's go away together. We'll get a fresh start. Maybe we'll get a break. I won't leave Johnny. But he's no good for you. He's a crook and a murderer. They're bound to catch up with him. Come on, get out. Get out before it's too late to get out. Johnny's too smart to get caught. Supposing he doesn't get caught right away. That doesn't stop him from... Oh, listen. Johnny loves me and I love him. You've got a lot of nerve coming here. I wouldn't trade him and what I've got for any stupid little job and, and a hole to crawl home to at night. Not if my life depended on it. I'm sorry, kid, but that's the way it is. Sometimes I, I think things might have been different once, but not now. I don't kid myself about that. Couldn't they ever be different? No, baby, skip it. Now beat it, and good luck. Okay. 
How do you do, Miss Martin? Come in. Miss Martin. Mr. Dalvers, I've been thinking over what you were talking about this afternoon. Then you'll take the job. Do you honestly think I could help those girls? I'm sure of it. So sure that the other day I recommended you for it. Just a formality that will take a few days. Do you think I'll be accepted, even there? Don't you worry about it. Uh, tell me, what made you change your mind? I went to see my sister this afternoon. I see. Then let me tell you what I know about the school. What do you want? Talk to you for a moment. Well, I don't know you, and it's quite late. I'm with the police department. May I come in? Sure. Uh, mind if I sit down? Oh, as long as you're with the police department. You don't believe me? I saw you talking to Johnny Moon. Well, don't policemen do that? I'm under the impression that they're afraid to. <laughs> Now that you're here, what have you to say? It's late and I'm terribly tired. Well, it's about the county correction school. I've almost decided you'll do for the job. Oh, you have? Yeah, I know all about you. As a matter of fact, I've looked up your past. Parents dead, state normal teachers college, good grades too. Then Park Hill Grammar School. One engagement, broken when your sister became notorious with Johnny Moon. Lost your job the other day for the same reason. And now you want to know one thing. Am I or am I not connected with Johnny Moon? You're a very smart young lady. And if I tell you? Then I'll know. I hate Johnny Moon more than anyone else in this world. That's what I wanted to know. Well, now that our record is satisfied, would you mind going? Don't you want to hear what I have to say? It's my turn. No. I'll tell you anyway. I have an interest in the county school. I see a lot of girls go in. I take them there myself. And I see a lot of them come out. No better, and most of them worse. The system there is all wrong. I'd like to see something done about it. That's why I have an interest in anybody who's elected to the staff. Tomorrow you appear before the board. Whether you know it or not, I'm the investigator for the board. I had to find out how you stood for Johnny Moon. Now that I know, I'll do all I can to help you. Don't double-cross me. I appreciate your warning, Mr. Donovan. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. OK. And you know that my judgment is back to the fact that I, I head uh, several important committees in this city. It's a matter of character. And I must say that I don't think the young lady is qualified. What do you say, Lena? Of course you're right, Margaret. I don't agree at all. I think you're being very unjust. Well, you're entitled to opinion, Mr. Donovan. I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Donovan. We are concerned only with the qualifications and character of Miss Martin. Well... And Mr. Cleeter? Well, I... Oh, I feel perfectly free to speak out, Mr. Cleeter. Uh, just because uh, my husband is Mr. McCarthy, uh, that is no reason why you should feel any obligation to agree with me. Oh, uh... You have made that point very clear before, Mrs. McCarthy. Well, then, then come on. You've heard as much as the rest of us. Well, uh, per perhaps I agree with you. What do you mean? I, 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 I mean, I mean, I do. I do. One minute, everybody. Wait outside just a moment, please. Never mind, Mr. Donovan. I don't want the position now. Thanks for your trouble. Well... Give us three minutes. Don't bother. Wait. She's being persecuted for something that isn't her fault. You know as well as I, Mrs. McCarthy, that Miss Martin has nothing to do with Johnny Moon. I know nothing of the sort. I know she was dismissed from the public schools as a bad influence on our pupils. <laughs> That's enough for me. Your husband knows Johnny Moon uh, rather well, does he not, Mrs. McCarthy? Are you insinuating that Mr. McCarthy... And uh, what is your objection, 
Mr. Cleeter. Well, I... Uh... Speak up, Mr. Cleeter. Well, I... Uh, I... Uh... Come on. Be honest about it. You want Miss Martin to get the job, but you're afraid of losing yours if you don't agree with her. Isn't that right? Now, see here, Mr. Donovan. I've stood just about enough. Yes. Yes, that's right. What's that, Mr. Cleeter? I think without a question, Miss Martin would be excellent for the position. You know what this means, Mr. Cleeter? I know what it means. It means that after 20 years, three months, and 15 days in the audit department, you will speak to Mr. McCarthy tonight, and tomorrow morning I'll be fired. But I don't care. Because I'm sick and tired of taking orders from Mr. McCarthy, your fat husband. And I'm sick of being dragged up here and made to say yes to you. Are you quite finished, Mr. Cleeter? No. I have a lot more to say. The people in this town don't know what's going on. They're being run by a crook named Johnny Moon, and they don't know it. Someday, though, they'll wake up. They won't be fooled for long. And when that day comes, I think I'll run for mayor. Come, Lena. You'll be sorry for this, Mr. Cleeter. If I am, I'll let you know. Huh. I'm sorry, Reverend. I am not. And you will have my vote in the next election. <laughs> Thanks. Don't disappoint me. I think I owe you an apology. Well, this town has some unscrupulous people in it, Mr. Donovan. But they'll straighten out. And when they do, <laughs> I'll come in with the new administration. But until that time, I'm going out and do something that I've never done before. What's that? Uh, <laughs> take a drink. Good day, Mr. Donovan. Bye, Reverend. You mean we've won? And when I tell you how, you'll never believe me. I heard mutterings. You report to the county correction school in 10 days. Now, how about some lunch? I'm only the acting superintendent. I'm in complete authority, however, until the new one's appointed by the county. And I might add that, uh, I expect to get that appointment. So, you're Johnny Moon's sister-in-law. Yes, I am, but don't hold that against me. Well, why should I? Well, some people seem to think. Well? Oh, this is Miss Martin. The county appointed her to take charge of the school. She's a psychiatrist, too, whatever that means. Uh, this is Mrs. Uh, Peters, my deputy. She has charge of the girls. How do you do? I'm just giving her an idea about the place. Mrs. Peters will show you around where you sleep and all that. Thank you very much. It's all right. Well, just one thing. Remember, this is a tough place for tough girls. The batter, they wouldn't be in here. The rules are strict, and I see that they're enforced, and no one gets mollycoddled. I got to explain that to you because you're inexperienced. Yes, I understand, Mr. Marcus. But you must be patient and let me sort of feel my way around. It'll be a few days before I can give you any helpful suggestions. Suggestions? You're not here to give me suggestions. I run this place from experience. You stick to your own job. Now, is that understood? Yes, of course. Okay. Mrs. Peters here will show you to your quarters. Come along. Come back later. I want to talk to you. These are your quarters. Oh, it's very nice. Come on, I'll show you around. This is the schoolroom. What are the classroom hours? 10 to 11. Just one hour? Lucky, you can keep them here that long. This isn't a finishing school. Thank 
me room. Mrs. Gray is our work matron. This is Miss Martin, our new teacher, in charge of rehabilitation. How do you do? How do you do? How is it now, kid? Like a hot poker. Why don't you go over and tell her? I did. She said, wait till tonight. Listen, kid, you might have appendicitis. What's the trouble here? Can't you see she's sick? She's had these attacks before and always got over them. I think we ought to take her to the infirmary. Miss Martin, you must let me run things the way I see fit. But if so, help me. If this kid dies, I'll... Take her inside. Be sure she answers the dinner call. I'll attend to you later. <laughs> You stuck your neck out. Why? Anytime you help us, you cross them. Why don't you beat it and save yourself a lot of trouble? How long has she been this way? Oh, about a month or so. But you certainly must have a doctor here. Sure, if they call him from town. When he don't get here, we just go ahead and hold the funeral. Keep her quiet. I'll get a doctor. I call sooner. Come out of my office. I'm sure Mrs. Peters can explain. You know, Doc, these girls are always faking. You can never tell. I like that kid. I'm gonna pay for this. I'm sorry. Uh, beat it, will you? You know better than the rest of them. He said you were gonna get the doctor. And then he's here hours too late. It wasn't my fault. Leave me alone. Before I begin, I'd like to say a few words. I'm going to try and make the work in this classroom as pleasant as possible. I don't believe that any girl, no matter what's happened in the past, is beyond an honorable and decent life in the future. In this class, I'm going to try and prepare you for just that kind of a future. But in order to do this, I'll need your help. Are there any questions? Yeah. Why does an appendix bust? I can promise you that that will never happen again as long as I'm with you. I got a question. How do you keep slop on your stomach? How do you entertain yourself in solitary? How do you keep from going crazy? What's the cure for a broken back? Answer that. Yeah! yeah. 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 Sit down, all of you. Be quiet. Now be patient. Give me a chance. Uh, we don't want you around here. Why don't you go back where you came from? Yeah! yeah. Be quiet! Be quiet, all of you. Listen, I don't care whether you want me around here or not. I'm here to stay. Now, I've asked for your cooperation. If you want to be helped, I'll help you. Later on, I'm going to see each one of you individually. Then you can voice your complaints. Now, let's go back to work. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Marcus. This is Rita Randall. Here's the history of her case. Good luck, Rita. And, uh, think over what I said. I'll think like everything, Mr. Donovan. So you're a friend of Johnny Moon's? Well? Take it easy. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Known Johnny a long time? Long enough to get him crazy about me. Hello. Johnny? Hey, let me talk. Take it easy. Johnny, this is Marcus. And that little girl of yours showed up here with Donovan. Yeah, right here. Sure, I get it. Nice and gentle. Okay, Johnny. Hello, Johnny. This is Rita. Johnny, they've got me in. You've got to get me out. A month? I don't care how it looks. You said if ever... Oh, don't be mad at me, Johnny. You know I do. You told him to treat me right. Why, Johnny? It's all right, kid. 
Everything's gonna be all right. You mean she and Johnny Moon? The poor kid. She knows what she's doing. My sister didn't. You were bursting with something to tell me. What was it? I'm afraid I got off to a bad start. After all, you can't win their confidence overnight. I wish there was something I could do. Suppose not only Johnny Moon, the people around him got hurt by this investigation, put in prison, maybe for a long time. Would you still be interested? Me and my sister might? Yes. Listen, during Prohibition in the 1930s, when Johnny Moon was just a bellhop, I used to haul him in for peddling liquor. And before anybody knew it, he wasn't a bellhop anymore. He hooked up with a few cheap racketeers, set himself up on the top floor of the downtown hotel. McCarthy's his pal. Together, they're cleaning up. He doesn't particularly want this place. The taxpayers pay so much each year to run it, and the way it's being run, all of it's gravy. Well, if you know all these things, why don't you... Well, they have to be proven to the governor. Can't you see him? No, I have to get the evidence first. Marcus is nobody to fool with. He used to run a pool hall down on 10th Street. Johnny Moon got him this job for a couple of favors I can't mention. So I want you to be careful. I'll be careful. And when you see the governor, will you phone me? First thing. Martin wants to see you. What did I do now? Maybe you look cross-eyed. Here's your slip. Why are you leaving? All right, make it snappy. You, stay here and take over. And quick. Okay. Okay. What's that? Yes. You want to see me? Oh, hello, Lizzie. Yes, sit down. Sure. Let's be honest with each other, shall we? Honest? Yeah, this card here tells me that you were shoplifting at the age of 16 years. Why? Is oh, I don't believe that. You just like nice clothes, and you just felt that you should have them. I didn't feel anything. I just seen the stuff on the counters and the hangers, and I liked it, so I took it. I was deluxe. I only worked the big stores. I don't like that cheap stuff. I wouldn't have it on my back. You like clothes, don't you? Yeah, I like them. I like to feel them and see them. Sure, I like them. Yeah, I guess that's my trouble. How would you like to make clothes for a living? You don't want to steal, do you? Supposing we arrange to teach you dressmaking. Would you like that? I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Awfully easy to arrange. Gee, I'd like to do that. Will you go on back to work? We'll talk about it later. Sure. A lady hobo. That's what I was. I hopped freight trains all over the country. I seen everything. Did you like seeing everything? It's all right. Except for the coal. You get thrown off by those railroad dicks. They come at you from the sidings. Every time you stop, they chase you off. But you left home because your father mistreated you. Yeah. I got beat up. I guess that's all there is. But don't you want to settle down and have a home and a husband? I know men. I met them all. I haven't found one yet that didn't lie his head off. I could write a book, a whole library. Did you ever read a book? No. They're quite interesting. Yeah, but I don't have one. Besides, books make my head ache. Have you ever had any trouble with your eyes? Yeah. They hurt me. So what? I can hardly see you. Well, don't worry. We'll find a doctor and see what the trouble is. Gee, do you think he could really help me? Sure. Ah, you're crazy. What have your eyes got to do with being a hobo? Imagine, my eyes are to blame and all the time I thought it was me. You ride my foot. She softened you up. You're doing, taking the girls right out of the laundry. I won't stand for it, turning the place into a finishing school. All right, all right. I warned you. Now you've got to do something. If this keeps up, none of us will have any authority. All right, go back to your work. Take care of Miss Martin. 
Well, we'll think about it anyway. Oh, yes, Miss Martin. Go back to your work, Della. Mr. Marcus. Maybe I didn't make myself clear, Miss Martin. I'm the boss here, and I like the way I run the place. If you've got any ideas, keep them to yourself. Now, is that clear? This is my job. I'm only interviewing these girls to see what they're best suited for. They're suited for the laundry. You're under my authority. I won't stand for this nonsense. Understand? I do. Perfectly. And another thing. A girl named Rita Randall's in for a while. She's got to be treated nice. No rough stuff. I don't believe in rough stuff, Mr. Marcus. Not for anyone. Miss Randall will be treated the same as any other girl. All right, Miss Martin. Don't forget what I told you about keeping your ideas to yourself. <laughs> to make an announcement. Miss Martin has seen fit to overstep her authority. She has been properly reprimanded. You are to disregard any promises she might have made you. How do you like that? Oh, vocational rehabilitation, my eye. Yeah, she's got her interest at heart, all right. Now get back to work, quickly. You will disregard whatever Miss Martin has told you. She has absolutely no authority whatsoever. Hereafter, you will report any attempt by Miss Martin in any way to interfere with the general routine of this institution. Now, do you understand that? Get back to work. Bruce, I feel as though I know you better than the other girls around here. Well? Well, you know what's happened. Sure, you stuck your neck out. What'd I tell you? You've been around here a long time. What would you do? I'd get out. Far out. Well, I can't get out. And I won't quit. Look, I don't know whether you're just dumb or playing some game. But if you know what's good for you, you'll stay out of the mess hall this noon. What do you mean? Nothing. I'm just warning you, that's all. us around long enough and then someone comes in here and tries to do something good for us and you push her around too well these kids deserve a break yeah. 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 and i ain't gonna let you why see. you You're not to interfere. Now get out. Well, how do you expect me to help these girls? I don't. Let me talk to Johnny. Johnny, this is Marcus. That sister-in-law of yours. What goes with her? Yeah, she's giving me a lot of trouble out here. Yeah, upset my whole routine. me about. 
have you been doing out there? Have you ever seen the place? Do you actually know what goes on there? Yes, it's four walls and a roof for naughty little girls. What do you expect, a ten-piece orchestra? No, but I expect some decent food and some clean rooms and adequate heat, like a dozen other American reformatories have. Oh, you expect. You and who else? Two weeks ago, a girl was let deliberately die when an operation would have saved her life. Today, we had a riot in the mess hall, and eight girls are in solitary for 14 days. What's the matter with Marcus? Marcus won't do anything about it. Do you believe me, the governor will? I always thought you were a pretty smart girl. But you've got the wrong slant, which disappoints me. However, I'll overlook that. I have nothing against those girls out there. And those measly pennies don't interest me a bit. Did it ever occur to you that our friend Marcus might be chiseling? No, I don't know that. But if he is, I can't afford it. Oh, you can't. Why don't you grow up? Let me put you in. Run it any way you please. Just don't get me in any trouble. You mean you want me to work for you? Well, why not? Everybody else in town does. Everybody else in town but me. Okay, Queen of the May. Go to the governor. See where it gets you. What's the matter, Johnny? I'm hearing bad things about you. I understand a dame died out there two weeks ago. Well, you can't blame me for that. And I hear you had a riot today. Well, now, listen, and we... I hear the food's no good and the place is a mess. What do you expect? Shut up. Put you out there to run that place right. First thing I know, somebody sticks his nose in, and the governor butts in and asks a lot of questions. I don't want a lot of questions asked right now. If you keep that sister-in-law of yours in line. She did me a favor by squealing on you. You've been chiseling out there. Cut it out. Okay, okay, so I've been chiseling. What do you expect on that crummy salary? And just where do you get off telling me? Why, you cheap bellhop? Don't say that. I don't like it. All right, Johnny. But we all got to get a little dough out of this. I'll put you out there for six months. You do as I say, or... Get out. Okay, Johnny. And get those girls out of solitary. What do you think you're running out there, a chain gang? What about that Martin dame? Lay off on her. If she gives you any trouble, come to me. You can handle her. I'll get back there and clean up. Get out. Get out. getting soft around here? Try something and you'll find out. I guess Martin sprung us. Oh, so you finally found your match. You couldn't muzzle her, huh? Wait and see who wins in the end. <laughs> I warned you about her. Big shot. He's a bellhop and no good tin horn. Well, he's not gonna get away with it. Listen, honey. I got a hunch this town's gonna bust wide open. And the more dough we can saw away, the better. And what about her? Ah, uh, she's another thing, and that cop. I'll tell you what. We'll lay off of her for a while, and just watch. That's right. Watch. is ready to see us as soon as we can produce evidence and witnesses. You mean the girls will have to testify? That's only part of it. We'll have to have definite proof, food receipts and so forth, to check against the budget. You think you can get them? I'll get them if I have to tear the place down. From one detective to another, I think you're pretty wonderful. Thanks. I mean it, I... How do you do? Well, hello. You remember Mr. Cleeter? Oh, he was on the board. How do you do? I think I'll sit down. By all means. 
Thank you. As, as you, pardon me, as you know, I no longer have a civic connection with the city or with Mr. McCarthy or Mr. McCarthy's wife, whom we all have reason to hate. You never should have taken that first drink. Nonsense. Why, that remark, that, that marks the beginning of a new life for me. <laughs> I'm now a man of spirit. I'm the spirit of civic righteousness. Believe it or not, I have not stepped foot in the city hall since that fatal morning. I'm a turned worm. My life is dedicated to the sole end of throwing Mr. McCarthy and Mr. McCarthy's wife from that structure four times from each effort. My entire existence revolves around booting that foul pair due east, north, west, and south in that precise order. Unfortunately, however, I lack the necessary courage. Why don't you get some sleep? Sleep? That's the trouble with all decent people. We've been asleep too long. We've been asleep and let them get the jump on it. What we need is a Paul Revere to ride through the world like a hurricane. Tour! I think the world can spare you for a few hours. Hey, it may interest you to know that I haven't been home since last Thursday. But how? I have solved that interesting problem by concealing myself in odd places for catnip. <laughs> I think I'd better be going. Why? Am I being dull? <laughs> no, not at all, but uh, Miss Martin has a long way to go. Oh. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Clayton. Good night, Miss Martin. Oh, oh my cup. <laughs> Thank you. Take it easy, old man. Yes, I will. Where? Where? The little princess. Shut up. Don't get tough with me, Judy, or I'll slap you cross eyed Hey, you two. Ah, she drives me batty. Sitting there like the Queen of Sheba. Says Johnny's just crazy about me. Yeah. Told you to shut your ugly mouth. Ah, cut it. Miss Martin wants to see you in her office. What she wants? Well, everybody here now gets psycho something. Um, you know, you get your head examined. There's nothing wrong with my head. <laughs> it's just empty, that's all. <laughs> Go back and tell her I'm not in the mood. Beat it down there and don't give her no trouble. I don't have to do anything I don't want to. Get. <laughs> Who did that? Johnny Moon. <laughs> Get on, go on. So what? So we're going to concentrate on that and think of your future. Our future's all taken care of. What do you think of that? I'd like to tell you a little story, one I know quite well. It's about a little girl, like yourself, who thought her job was a little bit dull. She was a manicurist. She loved excitement and pretty clothes. But she didn't know there was a price tag on it. I saw her not so long ago, and she admitted it. And the price tag was pretty high. Can you see anything in that story? Yeah. I see a low down dirty trick. Now I'll tell you one. Johnny Moon's in love with me. He's crazy about me. You're afraid I'll leave that sister of yours high and dry, so you try to split us up. Well, it won't work, see? I'd take my sister from Johnny Moon any time if I could. 
Who'd you go with before you met him? Say, what is this? I want to know. All right, I'll tell you. Twenty-two fifty a week with a mother and two sisters to support. That's who. He works in the Majestic Theater. Takes tickets. One eight off a week, and what do you want to do with it? Let's go and see the show. He says, see the show. He worked in the joint every night in the week and wasn't even sick of it. For a change, we go down by the river and look at the tenements. He wants to be an architect. All he ever wants to do is tear down buildings and put in plumbing. He don't care what I want. I think you should give the boy a chance. Help him. He has fine ambitions. I'm not interested in fine ambitions. I'm interested in myself. I want fancy clothes and furs and a car. I want to live high. What's his name? Never mind. You leave me alone. That's all, Rita. And you lay off of me. You lay off of me because I'm plenty tough, see? Yes, you are. And don't you forget it. I'm late. I've never been so worried in my life. It's after 11. I thought of one bad moment, it went just like that. Looks like it'll do it. Well, I'll check these against the piles in the courthouse. Am I a good burglar? How good you scare me. Now, have you got my information? Sure, I've got it. I hadn't had my eyes on. Oh, here it is. One with a boy named Tom Haversfield. Works at Majestic Theater. He's 23. Wants to be an architect. Oh, I know all about that. What I want to know is what's he been doing since Rita's been going with Johnny Moon? Well, he doesn't want to talk about it. Then you saw him. Why didn't you tell me? No, you didn't ask me. Besides, I was saving it for a surprise. And I suppose you said, why don't you go and see the girl? Well, what's the matter with that? Oh, you should be subtle. He's young. Okay, but... Subtle or not, I don't like the idea. By the way, what about Rita? You think she'll testify against Johnny Moon? She knows enough about him. I'll bet you'll never get her to testify. What do you want to bet? Two bucks and my reputation. You got a bet, pal. You're on. Ah, she kept giving us that malarkey about Johnny Moon. Now she can take it. You can laugh all you want, but Whitley Springs me. A buck you rot here. I won't rot here. What makes you say that? I know men, cutie. He'll get me out. You wait and see. Well, I can't say that I haven't got the time. Guess what? You got a pardon. Oh, no. No. 
Rita, Rita, you got a visitor. Well, so long, sisters. Will I ever hear the end of it? <laughs> Rita, is that any way to treat an old friend? Look, Tom. You look fine. Oh, these. Still drawing pictures of the dumps? Sure. I got some new ones. You should see them. They're the best yet. How's it majestic? Still crowded and full of kids. They're putting chewing gum in a drinking fountain again. Gee, you look wonderful. Tom, why did you come here? That's a silly question. See you, of course. But after what happened? Why, Rita, have you got a change of mind? When they told me I had a visitor, I thought it was... Rita. But I'm glad it was you. I've changed somehow or other. I can't explain it. I don't know why. But I know. Oh, Tom. Gee. I'll tear down those buildings and build them all over again tonight. <sighs> On paper. Will you wait for me, Tom? Sure, Rita. Okay, I admit I was wrong. Where's Mr. Cleeter? Oh, I think they jailed him for disturbing the peace or something. <laughs> Listen, it's all set. I saw the governor again, and he'll see us day after tomorrow. You've done a wonderful job, Helen. You make me feel awfully important. You know, I want to put a good word in for that Mrs. Gray. She's not so bad. Now, let's get it all straight. You're to meet me in town day after tomorrow. We go up on the train, see the governor, and give him the evidence. A warrant is sworn out for Johnny Moon. Rita's taken into custody and turned state's evidence. And with the state handling the case, that ought to put Johnny Moon away. Alarm! I thought you had some difficulty with my brethren on the force. Oh, I was detained, but I bluffed my way out. <laughs> they couldn't hold me for long. That's a sign of my gathering strength. May I buy you folks a drink? Oh, thanks. Hey, huh? In regard to that great day and not the far distance, the great day I refer to when I will usher Mr. McCarthy and Mr. McCarthy's wife from the city hall with the toe of my boot, I might say that I've added to my ambition. <laughs> Following those brief exercises, I will snatch the head off Mr. McCarthy's wife and I'll stuff it. It'll be encased in glass and placed in a conspicuous part of the rotunda. <laughs> yeah, well, here it go. <coughs> that stuff should only be served to pastors. <laughs> now, where was I? It's getting very late. Why is it that people won't listen to a recital of the corruption of this town? Why is they bat blind, the whole bunch of them? You tell him about it. Who's him? <laughs> yeah. the, the devil is hopping around this metropolis like an evil grasshopper. Pardon me. 
Would you people like to hear about a punishment I have arranged for two loathsome characters? It will be a gruesome contraption with pulleys and a wheel going around. Look, Joe, an alcoholic. It, oh, I beg your pardon. Bartender, give me another drink. Well, Johnny? All right. We must all work together on this thing, understand? The governor's level a bleeper story. You could have at least taken care of the receipts. Maybe you're better at running a pool hall. Try to chisel out here and see what happens. Lucky I've got a way out of this. Good evening, Mr. Marcus. Late, isn't it? Yes, it is, but I missed the last streetcar. Okay. Good night. Good night. All this doesn't mean much without the testimony of the dame and the kid. That cop can scream down the governor's throat. But without these tubes, he won't get very far. Now, here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow night, Helen's responsible for those girls. At 10 o'clock, they're going to go. I guess you got him crazy about you after all. What do you mean? Your boyfriend just sprung you out of here. He kept waiting outside. Johnny Moon? Sure. He's waiting for you now, down to downtown. Not going. That's funny talk from a girl that's crazy about a guy. Especially now that you can go and see. I'm not interested anymore. What's the matter? He's fixed you a clean release. I don't want my freedom through him. Ah, he's crazy about you. How do I know you're telling me the truth? You can see for yourself. This car's waiting outside. You never go home. I have just been a witness to a terrible crime in this city. Listen, you, start that again and out you go. All right. Here, bourbon. And line them up like a parade. I want to be drunk before I start to think what I'm thinking. Your life wouldn't be worth a nickel out there. It's so horrible. Well, Johnny Moon isn't kidding. After all, he must have found out about the plot. How, I don't know. That killed your testifying with the governor. But what can we do? We've got to prove that Johnny Moon killed her. Once we've done that... Well, what can I do to help? You better keep out of this. Mm. 
Oh, not a thing, Frank. All I can tell you, she was shot twice in the chest. Ballistics will have the full report in the morning. Oh, thanks, Tom. You're definite those are all the facts, Tom. You're sure you can't think of anything else? I can't tell you anything more. I don't know. I... All right. Rita Randall. I haven't seen the kid, Copper. How long has it been? Ever since you went to the workhouse. That's yes. You were home all last night? All night. No exceptions. Ask any of the boys around the hotel. You're pretty inquisitive, Copper. I should have had you kicked off the force and out of town a long time ago. Well, what's holding you up? You've got a pretty face. Peanuts are stale. I'm gonna pin this on you, Johnny. You can count on that. Pin away. Look, have you got a pistol, a revolver? A crime has been committed and this town is in disgrace. Why don't you go home, pal? Look, I want to discuss this crime. Certain parties must be apprehended. Not tonight. See you later. Get some sleep. Oh, anybody can sleep. Come on, Barton, you're cut another knot. Say, uh, have you got a hollow leg, buddy? Look, don't argue. I I need courage. Give me a lot of drinks. Line them up there for a minute. I'm sleep. Come on, Barton. Seventh floor.
You look as though you've had a hard night. He must have made a mistake somewhere. You know anybody by the name of Lionel Cleta? Sure, what about him? He's in the hospital with every bone in his body broken. He keeps asking for you. I'll see him later. Anything new at all? Do me a favor, will you? See him now. The hospital keeps calling up every five minutes. All right, I'll see you. You never should have taken that first one. Johnny Moon. What about him? That night at Southbridge, I saw him kill a girl. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. That night at Southbridge. Take it easy now. Baby, I thought you skipped the other day. You gotta get out of here quickly. Baby, we've had this all now out. Now listen to me, Jean. In 15 minutes, they're coming to get Johnny, and this time they're not kidding. They can't touch him, honey. This time it isn't the city, it's the state. What? Now, for your own sake, get out. It's your life. You can't save Johnny, and you can't help him. Kid, is this on the level? I swear it. Well, I'd better pack some things. Well, hurry up. I'd leave him now. They can't touch me. You killed Rita Randall. They can't prove that. No, but Lionel Cleeter can. You didn't finish the job. He's alive and in the hospital and ready to talk. Pighead! What's the matter, boss? You dumb lug. You didn't finish Cleeter. He's alive. Now the cops are after us. Gee, Johnny, we better get out of here. You can't get ten blocks. I'll get as far as I want to. When this blows over, I'll come back. Johnny, you're going to take me with you, aren't you? You're in too much trouble. and Mrs. Peters have been ousted. And uh, that's about all I have to say. And uh, now you're new superintendent. There isn't much I can say, except I want you all to feel free to come to me at any time with all of your problems. 